but today I'm going to talk about yeast, the different type of yeast, and which yeast to use for what type of needs. Um, first thing, if you're going to make a sweet mead, you don't necessarily have a strong yeast. Um, you can use a, an L yeast, for example, like Safe uh, Saf L5, California L yeast, very clean. Um, I've used Nottingham yeast before and cider yeasts, um, so you don't need a wine yeast. But you have to be careful about overloading the yeast, because if you overload the yeast in the beginning with the must, if it's too sweet, you'll turn around and the yeast will go back into a dormant state and you'll get a stuck fermentation. So you have to work out what the original gravities of a beer or a cider would be and try to get the yeast there. I would suggest 1100 is probably the max. Or you can step feed, which is you put in say two and a half pound of honey or two pound of honey, let it ferment for a few days until it starts to slow down a bit, which is usually about five, six days. Um, and then I'd rack, it, rack onto some more honey must, um, move some water. That's a way of step feeding the yeast because what you're doing is you're selecting the better strand or the better natural selection, the better strands of yeast in that culture that can take the higher alcohol. Um, that's one way of doing it. But I'm going to go through, I've got some notes here because there's a lot of, a lot of um, yeast on the thing and the different names for different manufacturers. But I'll go with a wine yeast first. Um, like I said, I've got some notes. So I'll find them root out. The first thing we used to also select a yeast is it depends what your fermentation environment's about. If you've got a controlled environment um, where you can regulate the temperature, then you can turn around and basically select any yeast you want. If you're like me, where I had uh, the brew shed, uh, and now I've moved from that because I've had to move, I've had to move into a different shed in the on the property. The environment is slightly colder and it's more susceptible to temperature changes. So depending on what time of year it is, is what yeast I'll use now. Um, and there's a lot of variety of yeasts that range from 10 degrees up to 30 degrees in fermentation. Um, so you select a yeast for your environment that you're going to be fermenting in as well. That's 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 quite important. So if you've got a steady temperature, get a temperature reading of what it is, and then go you can go through your list of yeasts, and then ascertain what type of mead you want. Um, also, the, on the honey, if the honey's a blossom honey, you want to pick a yeast that's going to emphasise that flavour. So usually they say it emphasises the fruit. And that's what you want to try and use. So we're going to go through a list of yeasts. Um, these are the proper names, most common names of the yeast, and then they've got different. You know, have different manufacturers have different codes for them. Um, for an example, Code Rhone, I know for a fact is a uh, garden number five, and it also is Lavin D forty seven. So that's. An example of different yeasts, the same yeast, just a different name. So we'll go through them. Um, Aspenhausen, it's a German red yeast, red wine yeast, um, for a full bodied. It emphasises spices, good with a spiced mead. Um, or if you've got a soft fruit mead, um, it's pretty good. But it does ferment at 20 to 30 degrees, so the temperatures need to be up. Uh, produces about 15% alcohol. Coke de Rome, who's Laban D47, Java number 5. Um, it's a good yeast. You do need to add nutrients to it. Um, tea, teaspoon and a half to three, depending on what type of mead and how strong your um, honey is and sweetness of the honey. But it does take a while to age. Um, if you were going to make a mead with D47, you've got to leave it a year after you bottle it. And you might bulk age that for nine months before you bottle it to help get through that aging process. Um, Loving 71 B in our bond. It's the one that I've just used on this making a video. It's a gentle fermenter. It's great for melamelts, uh, fruit meads, because it doesn't rip the flavour out like some stronger yeast do. 
So it's a good one. It's a gentle fermenter. It doesn't take as long to age. And the temperature of that D47 is 10 to 30 degrees. Now if you stay below 24, you won't get no Easters. Um, and you can get some off of it. But it's about 12 to 14%, which is a good table wine strength mead. Uh, Coke de Blancs. It's a slow fermenter. Needs a lot of nutrient, especially when you're uh, doing the mead. Um, fruit aromas. It's good if you want to use it with different. Again, good with honeys like orange blossom honey or strawberry or raspberry blossom honey. Uh, Twelve to fifteen percent. You've got to keep it up around the 20, 22 degrees to get the fermentation up that high, but it will ferment less if you're slightly cooler than that. Epinay, which is Lavin DV10. Champagne yeasts, 16 to 18%, but, and it works at 10 to 35 degrees. So it's got a good temperature range. Uh, for that, it's quite a strong yeast, quite aggressive. If you're going to do a fruit mead that you want with high alcohol content, or you're going to sparkling mead even, I would suggest that you put your fruit in the secondary on that one, not in the primary, because you will lose so much of your aroma and flavour. It's very aggressive. Uh, if you're going to do a sparkling mead with champagne yeast, you want to leave 4%, work it out, about 4% of what you want left. So if you're going to do a sparkling mead, when you add your final priming, you when you bottle it, you cap it, you do champagne meads, you tend to use a 29mm cap, um, and then leave it. And the longer you leave it, the smaller the bead, which is the size of the bubble. Uh, Montrachet. Uh, if you're doing a, a, a very sweet mead, or a very strong must, it does get stuck, that one. Um, it's weird because it's quite a high on it. You can produce an 18% mead with that. Um, you can do an 18% uh, medium dry, medium sweet mead with that one. You're better off turning around and adding step feeding in Monterey. Um, but it's good for a mellow mouth, good mouth fill on that one, especially with the darker fruits. Uh, Montpellier or Lavin K1V11116. It's known, well, it is an aggressive, it's known as a killer yeast, and this is what I'm going to read out. It's a killer yeast because it's so competitive, it will kill off any infections. It's good white wine yeast. Temperature range is good, 10 to 35 degrees again, so you want to aim for about 15 to 23 on that one, I would. Um, 16 to 18% alcohol. Um, if you've got a dark honey, that's a really good one for it. But again, you've got to step feed it, make sure it's got the right nutrients. does like it. So if I was doing that, I would use, say, three table teaspoons of um, per gallon of uh, nutri uh, yeast nutrient. My favourite from Melamouds, Narbonne. Loving B71, Gervin number five, 14%, um, which is good. Um, Temperature range is 15 to 29, so you want to be around about the 16, 18s, what I usually do, X, gentle fermentation. Doesn't rip the flavour, doesn't foam up too much, and you can throw your fruit in the primary. Um, and it really does bring out fruit character when you've matured that one. So if you leave a nice fruit mead for like, after you've... Uh, it's fermented, it's cleared, and you want to bulk age it, bulk age it for a, a year and then bottle it and then within six months it should be just right it's i mean it really does bring the character out that one it's one of my favorites uh let's go prune mousse champagne yeast rips through sugar it will go right through it um but honey has got several different complex sugars and the reason it takes so long to age is because it still ferments. Even though there's no activity, you've still got a certain amount of activity you won't be able to detect. It's because it's breaking down them long chain sugars into glucose over a period of time. Um, 10 to pre, uh, 
Lavin EC one 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 eight is one I know. Why use three two three seven? Um, 18 to 35 degrees, good temperature range, 18%. Uh, and they use it to stuck fermentation, just add a little bit of that in, it can help. So they're the preferred wine yeast. Um, Narbonne is good, Monterey is a funny one, but you can work with it. If you're going to use an ale yeast, so that's your wine yeast, um, so you want to work out roughly, like building a beer recipe, how much alcohol you want in the final thing because honey so variety you're going to be slightly off sometimes um, what your temperature range is you're working at and the character of the mead so if the honey's quite a fruity honey it's got a uh, blossom you want to emphasize that you want something that's going to emphasize that that in the final product now using beer yeast I've used cider yeast for sizes and I've used it for uh, straight mead actually and that comes out at about 12 to 13 percent I mean cider yeast is quite a good yeast uh, the other one that I would try to use is Safau like I said I've used Safau number five I've heard someone use number four which is an English ale yeast Nottingham yeast is good it's quite a clean one Californian yeast um, if you're making doing Sierra Nevada style beers or you want a real clean neutral taste um, White Labs number one, I think it is, California now yeast. It's a great one to use. Uh, I know there's people out there that's going to try and make meads with beer yeast because they can't get a great variety of yeast. Yeah, try that one. So you can use a yeast, experiment. Um, you're local to you, you know your conditions, you know what your setups are. So try and experiment. If you're a newcomer to it, I would honestly say, because you want probably a little bit of a quick turnaround to taste your first mead go for the Narbonne variety which would be Lavender 71B Jarvin number 5 Jarvin number 1 is quite a good yeast as well so I'll try and get a, a, a gentle yeast um, and it won't take so long to age um, and the reason I tend to use the wine yeast not the ale yeast is because I know that the character is they tend to be more neutral and then it can emphasize certain bits certain flavors in the honey uh, towards the end of the series i'm going to set up five demijohns i'm going to do exactly the same must exactly the same recipe but i'm going to do five different wine yeasts um, and then we'll follow that will be going through um, and then i'll be doing a taste of that one um, we'll see and it's the same honey um, i've got a good supply of honey come through again so That'll be a project for that one. But yeasts, play around with them. But if you're a newcomer, you want to try your first mead, you want to do it with a beer yeast or a cider yeast, that's fine. Um, if you want to do it with a wine yeast, go for an Arbonne variety. Champagne yeast will take a couple of years to age. Um, so for your first yeast, champagne yeast is a bit strong. If you want a quick turnaround. So that's, uh, so that's it on yeast. Thank you very much. And the uh, next part will be for part five. Um, I'll be racking the first one off um, and doing an update on all the meads that we've made so far in the piment. Um, and I hopefully I'll be trying to make another couple of meads on that part five. So thank you very much for watching. Carry on watching the series. Subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much.